Welcome everybody, my name is Michael R. Kubera and today I'm going to show you a legitimate, guaranteed, okay, nothing's guaranteed in the investment world, but this is a legitimate path to making a million dollars over the next 10 years thanks to cryptocurrency. It is a little bit different than the average investment advice from a YouTuber though. Oh, okay, I don't look that great. I have to look presentable, right? So let's change into our suit. There we go, that's a little bit more presentable. Welcome everybody, my name is Michael or Kubera. Today we are going to discuss how you can go from zero to a million dollars in probably the next 10 years. For the really smart ones out there, you might be even able to do it within five, six, or seven years. Without further ado, let's roll the intro and let us get into it. So what am I talking about? Is it investing? Is it the speculative side of cryptocurrency? No, it is still related to cryptocurrency. This industry is exploding. Judging off of the past few months history, how we surpassed over $1.1 trillion. Bitcoin has surpassed over $42,000 and then it had the correction. Now it's climbing back up. Currently it's at $35,500. So oh, that's a little bit better than yesterday's 30,000. There's a lot of volatility in the markets. That's not suitable for for every single person out there. Obviously for the financial experts, for the risk takers, go you, you're able to try it out, have some fun with it. But there is a completely other aspect to cryptocurrency, which some people just forget about because they just want to make money and get out. There's the technical side, there's the blockchain aspect of it where there's businesses who want to have something to do with blockchain. They want a blockchain department, they want tech with blockchain. Maybe their CEO heard about Bitcoin and just wants anything to do with blockchain. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is there's more companies that want to hire developers that means there's more jobs it doesn't matter what the price of bitcoin is obviously when crypto is in a bull market there's more money so there's more job opportunities but even in a bear market there are plenty of job opportunities and there's more sprucing up every single day due to a very simple factor high skilled labor that's it the year is 2021 we are quickly progressing towards this point of singularity where robots are going to take over the world okay maybe we're not quite there yet however last year was phenomenal apart from the whole pandemic and lockdowns the world's richest man is now elon musk and behind him is jeff bezos where both are in this space race one wants to go to the moon again another wants to colonize mars in a few years we're going to have self autonomous autonomous driving cars and taxis, flying taxis for Uber. Cryptocurrency has already been around for the past decade, actually even more. You look at how software has progressed, how video games have progressed, how movie cinematics, how everything that has to do with technology has advanced, except maybe medicine. It has advanced a little bit. We're still very far behind in certain areas. That's okay. I do believe we will get there. Obviously, one of the biggest changes is automation. We want to make sure that businesses are running smoothly, efficiently. So what does this have to do with everything? The people at McDonald's, well, they're getting replaced by the day. Already for the past few years, there's these little robots at the counters that you go up and boop, 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 there we go. You place your order. You don't even need to go up to somebody anymore. There are still people working at McDonald's, but there's less of them. There's certain industries, for example, like truck drivers, where as soon as we have autonomous cars, there's going to be autonomous trucks following after. You ever flew in a plane? Well, most of the work is not done by the pilot. It's done by an autopilot, by a robot. It controls the flight path and the only reason we have pilots is just in case there's an error because we're still early in the technology it is evolving though mainly just to land and take off that's it 90 percent of the journey is done through an automatic pilot so companies want to save money they want to run efficiently they know that software fintech technology is the future as of 2001 everybody thought that technology and the internet is the future and it was, it has revolutionized our lives, but now internet 2.0 is coming, crypto 2.0 might be the future, whatever that may be, and low skilled labor jobs will be replaced. So your future, Think about this. Whatever career you're in right now, this is where we get serious. You have time right now. You have the next few years to decide what you want to do with your life. 
maybe computer science, maybe software engineering, maybe that is the role you want to be in. Whether you're a marketer right now or you're working in some HR department or doing physical labor or you're unemployed, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you're passionate about cryptocurrency, you don't even need to go into cryptocurrency. It's just an area because as soon as you have these skills that are high in demand, you're able to use them for any industry you want. You want to work in law? Go for it. You want to go for medicine? Go for it. Stocks, crypto, financial, fintech stuff? Go for it. Why not? Every single industry on this planet needs technology right now. And the demand is only growing higher. There are certain industries like machine learning, quantum computers, all that stuff, robots, AI. Did you guys see the dancing robots video as of last December? <laughs> that sounds crazy. It was last year. It was a few weeks back. Robots have already advanced so much over the past two decades. Now you go into the bank and you have this pepper robot. Hey! That's nothing compared to the dancing robots that are fully smooth right now. That took so many man hours and it cost a lot of money. So the people who are developing that, the engineers, the mechanical engineers, the designers, the software architects, I mean, this, this thing has to run on something. These guys all are getting paid six figure jobs. Some of them might be even in the seven figures. So what do you do right now? You drop everything if you can. If not, if you're working a full time job, there is still a chance for you to go back to school or start anew if you've never been to school before, apply for universities right now. In Europe, if you're a citizen, it's free. If you're international in Europe, but you're you're able to live there, you got a visa, whatever, it's still gonna be cheaper than community college in America. In America, if you don't have money, community college is the option. If you do have a little bit of money, you can go to state universities as long as you had good grades. If you're rich, go to Ivy League or whatever. The world is your oyster. There are multiple paths you can get to reach this target of 10 years. If you go from zero, Zero. You can have zero money in your bank account and you can go negative with student loan. Of course, this depends on where you are in the world. For Europeans, it's going to be free. For America, if you don't have money, community college, a few thousand dollars, you can go to work, any crappy job, pay for college. And if you're really, really worried about it costing you a lot, there's also another option, graduating early. You see, I got very interested in this because my friend, he got into computer science and he's graduating in two years. I thought this was never possible. I didn't even realize this was an option. I knew that there were such things as graduating early of a semester or two, but four semesters, and some people are even able to do it in one year, not one semester, so two semesters. How are those people able to do it? It's the same as those who are graduating in four semesters in two years, except they've already been to college. So if you've already been to college, your job is so much easier because you probably already have the money to pay for college because you're already probably working full time. Sometimes your job, sometimes your workplace will spawn sponsor you going back to school. If you have that, that's great. If not, for example, there's programs. You just have to look at what's available. You have to look at scholarships and grants. If you had good grades, if you didn't, look around at companies, even stuff like Starbucks, for example. If you're in Arizona, if you go to ASU, Starbucks only works with ASU. It's still a good school. There's other companies that chose specific schools as well, but this is just the example that I'm giving you. Starbucks pays up to, I think, like five or $6,000 per year, and tuition for most programs is like $9,000 per year. So Whatever Starbucks pays for you and whatever you earn at Starbucks, boom, you have college paid off. There we go, no student loans, you don't need that. So the best path that you can take is go to college and graduate early so you can start within the next two or three years. Now, there's gonna be some people who say that for this industry, you do not, if you wanna be a programmer, software developer, you don't need to go to college. And yes, in this industry, if you have the knowledge, if you have the experience, if you have the GitHub projects to prove, hey, yes, I'm a great hire, you're still gonna to have to compete with those who have diplomas and degrees. But if you go to a boot camp, sometimes if you pick a good boot camp and it doesn't rip you off, you're gonna to have to do your research with this. You're able to learn within the next six months and hopefully within the next nine to 12 months, you're able to find a job. If you already have experience, of course. Most of the good boot camps don't allow beginners, so you already need to know how to program a little bit. But here's the best part learning is completely free. There's so many free resources. I know this video is long, but stay with me. Technically, you don't need to go to a boot camp or college, but finding a job is very difficult as a junior developer. So you could always become a freelancer, start building your projects, and become an entrepreneur or build your own business. So if you're a teenager, you have the best period of time right now because you're still able to choose whatever path you want to take. The last path is very, very difficult. Unless you're the next Mark Zuckerberg or Jack Dorsey, Jeff Bezos, you probably should go to school or boot camp. And if you don't, get at least a good mentor that's able to teach you very quickly, get a lot of lessons, 
There's a lot of free resources. If you go to university, graduating early is the best thing you can do. So how do you do that? Very quickly, you're gonna have to do your research because all of these are complicated topics. I, I can only fit so much in a single video. We're gonna be doing a lot of videos on this because why am I even making this? I am heading down this path. I'm going into computer science and, and hopefully I get accepted into the program that I want. On my other channel, we will be exploring that journey. So if you haven't yet subscribed, check that channel out. So whichever path that you choose, if you wanna to stick to blockchain and crypto, which usually if you have extra classes, extra electives, you get to choose whatever you want. Some universities offer blockchain courses. If not, there are courses online. There's MOOCs, M-O-O-Cs. They're free from like Stanford and some of these really, really good schools. They're basically online courses. They are paid if you wanna get a certificate, but you don't really need that certificate if you have some really epic projects. If you're smart, if you have good grades from high school and maybe you took AP exams, you can use those AP exams to get out of certain classes in college, and this is how people graduate early. Now, if you didn't take AP exam, if you just recently finished high school, technically you're still able to go back to a high school and take these AP exams. You can sign up, although now it's been made a little bit more difficult with the pandemic, so you're gonna have to find out in your local area. The other option is CLEP exams. These are college level preparation exams, and basically, if you already have knowledge of mathematics, which is very important for computer science, you're able to take out math by going and taking this CLEP exam, passing it, and then boom, you don't have to take math anymore. As long as your university accepts this, because some don't, most do. Some have limits to how many points you can take out, but the best way to take out a lot of courses is find a university that accepts up to 90 credits. If not, 60 is the best bet because usually there's 120 credit hours. 90 will usually be very difficult to get to unless you already went to college and you have a bachelor's in something else. And just to avoid any confusion, yes, we're talking about a bachelor of arts or bachelor of science that usually takes four years. Some people take it in five years even. In Europe, it's three years in certain countries. For example, Poland. So Let's not even get into that. But in America, it's four years. And yes, you can graduate that in as little as a year for the more difficult subjects such as computer science, two years is a good bet. But even if you're not that smart, but you just have a lot of willpower and determination, you can graduate in three years or three and a half years. The more CLEP exams you take, and there's also these things called DSST exams, and there's a, a whole plethora of other exams, some schools offer tutoring and some schools have their own exams. So this means even if they don't accept CLEP or DSST or even if you've never taken that and don't wanna go that route, if you go to school and you're just like, ah, I just wanna take the four years and chill and relax, you might be interested in reducing some of your coursework and you still might graduate a semester early if your school offers enough program that you're able to do after school hours, which is really, really cool. Also, a lot of schools have these special programs that are basically if you have work experience, so if you already know how to program, but you want to go back at your degree because it's a little bit tough to get a job, you just want to get that HR check mark so all your applications go through, you want a better salary, maybe you want to manage your job, but you don't want to spend the four years, there are courses and exams which you can go through, prove what you know, and if you take the exams, you pass that, they just mark the they mark the course as passed. Now it's gonna affect your GPA because it's just pass or fail. So you're gonna have less course grades. And if you fail a class that's not in pass fail, but just a normal GPA score, well, that's gonna bring your GPA down. So for some of the higher, such as the FANG, Google, Facebook, Netflix, if you wanna work at them, they might be looking at GPAs. But if you don't care, if you wanna work for a local company and like whatever, not every single company looks at GPA. There are some downsides to this as well, where uh, if you're taking online, for a lot of people, I would recommend this online. And there's this whole notion that online school sucks. If it is a diploma mill, then yes, it sucks, but I'm talking about a normal university. It says like University of Arizona, University of Florida, Lewis University, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, something like that, U Chicago, like whatever. It'll say the normal university and no one will ever know you went online. It is more popular than ever before now since even normal university, due to the lockdowns, there's so much remote work and everything's online that if you already signed up for online classes, your stuff is pre-recorded. Your stuff is already good to go. It's live, boom. While people who weren't prepared, suddenly you have these crappy classes where the teachers just don't even know how to turn on 
on their camera for the first few weeks. So how to graduate early? Go online to a reputable university. Of course, you have to apply and get in. Take as many CLEP or DSST exams or, or career knowledge exams or whatever it is. Usually, you will have to pay a fee, but it is going to be a fraction of the cost of college. So even if you don't have a lot of money and you're thinking, oh my God, I got to take out student loans. First off, apply for FAFSA. You might get some government money. And next up, if you're still very far off target, if you're paying $120 for an exam and you pass and your course tuition is over $1,000, you just saved yourself a lot of money. You paid like one tenth. So take as many exams as you can And in addition, if you want to have the perfect chance of graduating early, even though you don't have internships and you're building your network, whatever, you don't need that. No distractions. You just get that degree diploma. And the number one way to get a job in programming is projects. You have either experience working with a company. So if you get an internship, great. Sometimes straight off the bat, you might just get lucky. You might know somebody from your old high school, somebody within the network that you didn't build at college, but somebody just that you found online or you were chatting with or your local buddy or your neighbor, whatever. Sometimes it's very rare, but you can get a job like that. 80% of getting a job is your network. The other 20% is experience. So if you're completely screwed out of luck, build as many good projects as you can. If if you can't build any projects, just go into, look up fun open source projects on GitHub. Do as much work as you can. Even if it's like Minecraft, for example, from a few years, ago. You're always able to include anything. If it's a video game that you created, if it's an application that you yourself use for building a budget or uh, your taxes or whatever, for class organization, right? A mobile application that you have built. Anything that other people are using, that you're using, anything that you already maybe sold to a company if you're freelancing. So maybe you can go into freelancing straight off as soon as you know the knowledge and then you're able to get a job. But let's say you don't graduate in two years. You graduate in three graduated early, even with the help of FAFSA and scholarships, let's say you're negative $20,000 because you didn't choose the most expensive school. You also saved some money with CLEP, but hey, you're negative $20,000 because that's how much it costs, right? So from that third to fourth year, you immediately go into freelancing and you're able to make up that $20,000. You may not be making hundred k It's also going to depend on where you live. If you live in a high cost of living area, obviously you're going to get paid a little bit more, but you make some money on the side. You build up your experience during during college or after college, during your free time, you are spending every hour learning about different programming languages because there's the theoretical aspect of college where, yes, you have to learn about algorithms and the big picture, getting the big picture idea. It prepares you for learning these programming languages quicker and understanding how it all fits in together. So let's say within that year, since you were focused on a lot of learning, you're living with your parents or you're living with a roommate, you're sharing money. Living with your parents is probably the best bet. So let's say you made $40,000. You paid off the $20,000 of student student debt. You have $20,000 for that year. You're back to zero. And in year four, you already have experience. You have that degree. You start applying for jobs. You should apply three months before actually when you want to start. Apply in your area. If you don't find anything in your area because it's small, go beyond. You don't have to get into crypto yet, but you could if you wanted to. Crypto and blockchain jobs will pay 20 to 30% or even more. The first job you get is, let's say, $60,000. You work that for the next year. We're already in year five. Total revenue so far is $100,000. 60 plus the 40 from last year. Then you decide, as most employees do, switching companies is your best bet of raising your income. And suddenly you accept a job that goes from 60 to 120,000, where there's been a lot of people on Reddit on Glassdoor, on CS Career Questions. All these guys are like, yeah, it was pretty easy to get a 100K job. As long as you have a degree, as long as you have over one year of experience in the workforce or potentially more, where you could also include that year of freelancing. So technically you already have two years of experience and you're open to moving around to a lot of jobs and you've got a lot of projects under your name and you had a good review from your previous job. You might get recruited from LinkedIn. You might get spotted through GitHub or whatever. And that's fine. If you get recruited, you probably have a lot more leverage against the company. You're able to negotiate, always negotiate. As a developer, you're high in demand. From year five to six, you made 120,000. So total revenue, $220,000. Let's say you work there for two years, all the way into year seven. 240 plus the 100, $340,000 within that seven year time frame. Now you're thinking, how do we get to a million dollars? A million dollar income within that 10 years. Some of you might say, well, wait, I thought you were making a million dollars in 10 years. So it's a million dollars cash. Well, 
if you invested money in Bitcoin and you got so lucky that you have a million dollars, as soon as you cash out, you still have to pay capital gains. There's fees and <laughs> there goes a few hundred thousand dollars. So obviously the first years where you have to pay for college, you're living kind of the broke life, you're not going to have a lot of money. But then later on, when you're already making over $100,000, you don't care. As long as you're living a minimalistic lifestyle, if you're already making $100,000, think of how much easier it is to invest $10,000 into Bitcoin, $10,000 into this, $10,000 into whatever project you want. The next job that you pick up is $200,000 with stocks, so equity, with bonuses, with benefits, all of this stuff. Great. Year seven to eight, $200,000 on top of the previous stuff. We're already over half a million dollars in revenue. The next two years, you continue working at the same company. You get a bonus and boom, you get to $1 million in revenue. It's very easy to get to $250,000 annual income because there are junior web developers who, this is crazy and extremely rare, but there are cases where people went to work, for example, at Citadel straight out of college and they got $400,000 annual with everything, with comp and stocks and all that. Obviously, that's probably not going to happen, so getting a 60K job is more likely, and this all depends on if you graduate early or not, but also you could take the four years and get lucky and go work straight at Google in Silicon Valley, and then you start off, instead of below 100, you start off over 100, and whatever you save, you're able to invest and make more income for yourself. So by the time of year 10 passing into year 11, when you're making 250000 260. dollars $300,000, however much, you're maybe able to start your own company, you're maybe able to invest in something and that takes off. You don't care, you have the power. You're able to do whatever you want. Why am I recommending this path? Because high-skilled labor will always be high in demand. They will pay whatever they can. Think about it, Ethereum Solidity. How many developers are there in the entire world that are actually really good at it? A few hundred, that's it. A few hundred, maybe a thousand at most. Businesses wanna work with Corda. You wanna work with Corda? There's only a select bunch of people who know what's going on. I'm talking about experience like Antonopoulos style or Vitalik Buterin or something like that. Obviously these guys are gonna be paying millions of dollars and they're already millionaires, but there are web developers making over $1 million a year. This isn't outlandish. Obviously it's gonna take you a long time to learn. You're going to have to be a hard worker. But the chances of this happening are so much easier than the chances of you striking a million dollars with your next Bitcoin investment or altcoins or DeFi. And then you're also able to invest on the side. It doesn't matter. So think about it. That's it for today. My name is Michael Kubera. I know this was strung out. So we're going to have more in-depth videos showcasing you both my journey of how I go through this. Hopefully, I'm turning 23 years old next week. By the time I'm 33, I hope I'm making 200 something thousand dollars. Hey, I made over 100K when I was 19. Anything is possible. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Subscribe if you're new and bye. I appreciate all those who are returning back on a daily basis. It really means a lot.